All right, this oh, is boy. this is Flotcast, new podcast, dinosaur, all that all that jazz. It's pretty dank. I am JW Kirby. Who else is here? Is here, uh, Nick, aka formerly Triraptorix, now Stalk guys. You know, you know, but that sidekick guy from Trade Explainer, but now it's like a voice, it is a boy. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, former Trey fan, for, former Trey uh partner actually. Oh yes. All right, and uh, who else is here? Well, uh, uh, I'm uh, Adam Lakatos, and uh, uh, I don't know what to say. It's just me. All right. <laughs> yeah, Adam. Sorry about it. Yeah. No, that's fine. I mean, we aren't a very interesting cast of people anyway. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is the worst intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the best yeah. one. It's the best. It's the best, best intro ever. Yes. Uh, Any idea we are number one. To see this intro and be like, wow. <laughs> this is impressive. We are number one. Hey. 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 Oh yeah. This is nice to go. Got Jonas Hackens, also known as Jonah Gold, two thousand or something, or five thousand, whatever. <laughs> We all have one thing in common. We're paleo artists and we're really dank. That's two things, actually. <laughs> and we got fancycard.deviantart.com. Yeah, go, go to deviantart.com and see if you can guess our usernames because we're not going to tell you. Oh man, so, I was going to. Oh, but I can tell my founder one, right? Yeah, go ahead. No. no. Okay, so Diego Colman here, Latino from Paraguay. Um, rookie on the field of traditional art, and yeah, you can find me on Tumblr by the name of Flying Idiot and Flying Idiot Doodle. Good. And yeah, that's pretty much. Good name. You Thanks. you can you can find me on Deviant Art at uh, Kirby Niferous Regret. That's a horrible name to spell, but it's just like <laughs> Carboniferous, but Kirby instead of Carby. And I'm Adam Source O2 on DeviantArt. And I am Fancy Card on DeviantArt. We also have Stolpergeist here. And, and Jonah that. Gold, 200. Yeah, we also got Stolpergeist. Well, I mean, uh, Stolpergeist. Yeah. Try, <laughs> uh, I mean, Stolp. Who may that be? Oh no. Stol I'm All right, serious. we got a good solid intro guys, down on our hands better. now. This is going to require a lot of editing on Adam's end, as we think. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So yeah. this it's week, the, uh, new stuff. Things. This week we got uh, new news on Hatsigopteryx. Turns out it was a short boy, not a long boy. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> The ex Hungarian <laughs> Romanian pterosaur. First joke of the podcast, everyone clap your hands. <laughs> Slow clap. We need like sitcom effects or long. Oh, yeah, we need some sound effects actually. But yeah, sound we, here. Do we actually need that? <laughs> Why not? Yes. I, say, I say we need it. I say it's an integral we, we part just, of every just podcast. Gonna edit it. We have we to get a laugh track. Get a oh, so we had to do a editing session as well. Yeah, we also need to get a boo track for, for the intro segment. <laughs> yeah, I know which one. Mm -hmm. We need a David Peters sample. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, yeah, Atsigopteryx has a short little neck, kind of kind of goofy looking, kind of, but strong, very strong. Very strong. She will give me strong sounds. I don't know if this big is new guy, actually. or not, per se. Really big-headed guy. I think it was known at least since 2015. There was this other one, that was small, um, at Starkid, from Headset. Um, like, really small boy, but also short neck. And from that time since, I think it was like, um, 
Katsikopteryx and this unnamed one were put into one clay together. Some sort of headset, short neck boys. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. For boys. So something like, so something like that. I have, a, I have a question actually. Yes. Is the the paleo meme of Katsikopteryx eating baby sauropod dead or something? Uh, well, I'd say it should be going dead at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. we, have, we have all kinds of pictures out there of not just Hattigopteryx, but all kinds of different Asdarkids uh, scooping up baby sauropods, which is Dang. probably something that it did do, but I feel like at this point it's kind of been done to death a little bit. Well, that's the nature of any meme, actually. Yeah, that's... Sadly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's why it's a meme, otherwise just a fairy one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, I think, I mean, memes in general should be shot. Yeah. Okay, in order to gas the memes. What evolve. So, oh, I can't. Uh, this should also be the case of paleo memes, because, because if you look at meme culture, it's, it's general, right? Um, memes um, usually go extinct, but normies is keeping to use them. So this is the same with paleo memes. People yeah. who aren't as informed are, are still continuing to use them. So you can like apply what you know from typical internet memes on memes in general, like as the term which was coined by Richard Dawkins. You can apply this concept on paleo memes as well. Yeah. When very intelligent and thought provoking amongst this big shit storm of memes. <laughs> I like how the dank is <laughs> what was that one? Yeah. What's that like, one uh, triclodont that's related to uh, Velatic Ethereum? That's only known from teeth and a little bit of the skull, but people always reconstruct it as like this bat thing. Oh, what's that? me? Something like, conodon. I'm not sure, but uh, I know what you mean, but I have no idea what what the name was again. Yeah, uh, so I'll figure out who it is, and then we'll edit in, a, we'll slap a little picture on it, and put a put a label at the bottom that says, Dumbass Kirby, can't remember names. You mean, you have a, you're like the small memo guy, you should remember it. Yeah, I'm the ferret boy. This one? Is it, uh, wait, wait, um, Volatec, Volatec Ethereum, or is it? It's related to Volatic Ethereum, it's a trickle on it. Uh, shit. Um, wait, wait a second, what does Wikipedia say? I'm so professional, I'm using Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let let Sorry, me go... Uh, my my, my cap call just drop it again. <laughs> I'm no, back. That's fine. So, um, no worries. Uh, should we can know Restus? Or, or is, wait, Ichthyoconodon? Ichthyoconodon, I think is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's always restored as a baddie thing, but they're really... There really isn't any evidence to support that. People just see the baddie thing and are like, alright, well, that's what it looked like. It's from the uh, uh -huh. Canadon Asphalto Formation. Uh -huh. Are you talking about Synaptic? Yes. Yeah. Little ratty Ooh. things, I aka mammals. Dawn of pubes. Normal type. Did someone just say Dawn of pubes? <laughs> <laughs> Also known as the evolution of mammals. Yes. Um, I don't know if this is new or not, but uh, I saw a picture uh, recently of a cave painting in Australia of a diprotodont uh, that that could potentially uh, be a nod to uh, to its color. It was black and white, and it, it didn't have proportions that looked like a giant wombat, as it's usually predicted. It looked a little bit more like a cow or a bi or a bison, but um. Cow. It's based. Wait. Then again, that's a cave painting. A and cow. It's probably a little bit abstract. It was colored like a cow. It's basically a marsupial cow. Yeah. That's what she said again. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> a marsupial cow. That is what she said. I I did hear her say that. Don't know about what, but I do remember her saying that. I do. I, I do remember saying that. Definitely. Well... <laughs> Some marsupial cow. Uh, this is already going on topic. <laughs> what, what, else, what else would you expect? 
We're the dankest paleontology podcast there is. All right, I think we've covered uh, a good majority of news, and by that I mean we talked about the short net as dark. And what else is there to talk about? Screw everything else. Uh, we'll just stop you. Yeah. There was, a, there was a study on um, Forrest Raked, uh, Curse of Reality. Oh, good. What, what, did it, what did it come out to say? If I, I don't remember. It said that, it said that they're cursorial. <laughs> Probably. Right, now, now we have proof that uh, giant birds like forest rockets actually did walk on land. I'm glad that settled. I, I, you know, I always thought that uh, forest rakids could fly. And, <laughs> or maybe they were penguin-like, but now we know that they're cursorial. Yeah, you know, I mean, they can glide in arc survival ball. It's full. Yeah. To find the living more metro more, more, more fuck. <laughs> Hind limb morphometry of terror birds. Same terror way. bird, the cool way of saying forest rocket. That's uh, the thing is, I, I used to say it like when I was younger, but these days I try to avoid it because the things you are associating with. It's just, yeah, uh, what if you're what if you're terrified of like how like, yeah. If you're terrified of things like house wrens, then a house wren is a terror bird. That's the link to the study. Also, I always feel like when I'm typing the term, it's, it's like I feel like the NSA is watching all the uh, show. <laughs> what is it, Adam? Yeah, Adam said he's stopping no. the recording for a second. So. Do you guys hear me? <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's Joshua. Oh, yeah, we, we also got now Joshua Knubbel himself, a uh, Hyro Trioskian on DeviantArt. Yeah. Yeah. My, my. He, he's, our pro, he's our resident professional. He's, <laughs> hey. what? he's the only celebrity here. Yeah. Uh, seems like I have a little bit of problems with my um, audio, so... Who knows what's going on? I, I clicked on on and off a few times, and now it seems to work a little bit. Well, I mean, at yeah. least you're here, so I'm just gonna boost our views for sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Get us, yeah, we, get us. we have a real life person here with us. Yes, Ooh. someone who actually exists. No, no, like, you need that picture where you're too hot outside and you just, uh, you know, get some clickbait on the thumbnail. Just, we we have Joshua's, someone who's actually been on Wikipedia. Just Joshua's face all over the thumbnail and then various drawings on terrors or um, earth archives. Uh, better not. My hair looks terrible right now. Just Wasn't there a recent the study suggesting eyes, that uh, over raptorosaurs? had really strong legs and could probably kick the crap out of things pretty hard. I don't well, think we remember that. Even more like cassowaries than we expected them to be. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ashley's online. Ooh. Oh, we, we got to get the, the plat display here if we want the views. Yes. Adam, can you not turn on your mic? Mm-hmm. So yeah, moving on to uh, next topic, right? Yeah, this that, that is if we are forward. even recording right now, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, I I'm glad to know that we didn't miss any of the scintillating content that we just uh, whipped out. This is terrible already. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go I down in meme history. If we want to be a dunker number one... Yeah. We gotta catch a normie on the run. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, uh, so Sam is Ashley, Ashley Kate, and we're going to be recording things. I'm mean, going to see chat when he's uploading to YouTube. Alright, so I guess we can uh, move on to talking about integument now. Of course. Woohoo! Alright. Yeah. Uh, starting out with feathers, I think pretty much all of us here agree that uh, Feathers do seem to be a basal trait for all ornithodirons. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, and it seems the more and more discoveries you find, the more and more uh, it seems likely that this is true. For the example, recent pigna fibers on the top of Harid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the branching, branching structures. Like branching branching yeah. pigna fibers. Mm -hmm. And also, is the uh, early whiskers uh, thing again, or not? That one theory that feathers originated as sensory organs, like whisker-like structures. Yeah, that's uh, pretty Yeah, that could be possible. I think the same was also speculated for hair in synapses. Mm -hmm. So it uh, also evolved for this purpose in the first place as the sensory organs. So we could be expecting things like whiskers and very uh, uh, more basal archosaurs, perhaps. Yeah, I mean. Maybe not as faceless like the bacteria, but something more in yeah, only bacteria, something like I just sort of more maybe I don't know, but um, it's like to say that it's a basal bacterium, uh, sort of um, basal archae metacellian uh, trait. So yeah, right. Now um, we know, of course, that there are some dinosaurs out there that we have a lot of scale impressions for, and. Um, as, as for, from what I know, uh, scales on birds, at least uh, reticuli, are made from alpha keratin. And um, um, scuta are made from beta keratin. And scuta are actually, uh, it se as it seems, to be just highly modified feathers. So, uh, um, if, if you yeah, look I'm, at chickens, yeah, you can see... Uh, the feathered leg chickens that the, the feathers on the leg are actually the modified uh, uh, scuta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, well, when the question goes as to what dinosaurs had what types of uh, integument and feathers, we can look to animals like a uh, concavenator, uh, ignoring the uh, controversial uh, quill knob thing. And just look, we know that it has the scuta on its feet and on the bottom of its tail. Uh, and we know that scuta do seem to be uh, highly modified feathers. So it would seem as though that a concavenator and probably most uh, allosauroids in general uh, descended from a feathered ancestor. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so, we have scan impressions from, I think, was the juvenile allosaurus with, um, I think, it's Oh, I was about to say Duramimus, no, um, but then I remembered it was a um, Megalosaurus. Mm -hmm. So natural view it had like, it actually had scale impression, but it is still also like, it's still high, like the ancestors were completely fat and covered with some kind of fuzzy integument, which has evolved all the time. Um, what? Is this some noise? What's that? No, I'm not sure. It... Oh. Well, Man, it said not to murder anyone on stream, but it looks like it's happening. <laughs> uh, nobody took my advice. And now the police are going to be after us. I can't go to jail. I'm too young and beautiful. <laughs> young you one, you. And you I have your ferrets. <laughs> So, I, have, I, mean, have, I have four ferrets at home to take care of. You can't do this to me. Brothers. This oh, is okay. creepy. <laughs> yeah. Thank Indeed. You. All right, back on, back on the subject of integument. Um, <laughs> when it comes to uh, what, di uh, what dinosaurs had what feathers, and is it possible for a dinosaur to have no feathers at all? Um, since it does seem to be likely that feathers are a basal trait for uh, for Ornithodira. Um, well, to that, what I would say is, uh, you know, a lot it happens of, like in a traditional way. Yeah, I mean, it's possible that they are like entirely covered in scutes that evolved from feathers. In fact, mm -hmm. aren't that fuzzy, but it is still possible that they had some kind of filaments in some part of their body. Yeah, you look at if you look at uh, modern day mammals that are very scaly, uh, armadillos being a good example. I usually use uh, armadillos have scales that are also made from alpha keratin, much like what most of the skin impressions that we find. Don't forget about pangolins uh, and pangolins as well. Yeah, 
most uh, like most of the scale impressions that we find are from the alpha uh, alpha carriage in particular on dinosaurs. And early feathers are very similar to uh, hair on mammals. And yet, you would expect something like an armadillo. If you found impressions of a fossil armadillo, it would probably be fully scaly and you wouldn't see any of the tiny hairs protruding from it. But we know in life uh, that armadillos do have a very fine coat of hair covering most of their very scaly body. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, knowing that, it's, it's not really that far out of the question to uh, give a, a very light, fine uh, coat of fuzz on even animals that we know are very, sca very scaly, like uh, uh, hadrosaurs. Which turned out to be uh, well, just a raccoon. Yeah. We know that um, yeah, it was completely hairless when it was found the carcass, and well, because the uh, <laughs> and the uh, yeah. decomposed, um, therefore looked like some kind of weird monster creature. But on the mm -hmm. other side, it's still slightly that some dinosaurs, like for example, hadrosaurs, and may maybe even a belly source and so on, they probably weren't that fuzzy or not fuzzy at all. Maybe just the mane or something, like a horse, but... Could have, could have had just the mane, maybe a little bit of a feather mohawk, yeah. or maybe just uh, a coat of feathers that is as fine as hair is on a human. Or to where just, you wouldn't really be able to see it from a distance. Or just some kind but, of whiskers, like if, it, if they were uh, like these whisker type of structures at the beginning, like in mammals. Mm -hmm. Like if you if you look at mammals, you can see that even the biggest mammals like whales and elephants have uh, fur. So I think. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, I think one of the problems is that it's very hard to define the uh, the term feather um, because we now have have so many different structures we we call feather, but. Um, yeah, uh, to yeah. to have really um, a fixed terminology in this uh, in this case is very difficult. Yeah, feathers are a very diverse group of uh, uh, of different types of integument. the The one thing that they all have in common is that they probably came from a common ancestor. It's not like uh, scales on reptiles versus scales on uh, mammals, where they are probably independently evolved. Yeah, um, and, and for feathers, example, um, in, for yeah. example, in, in Colinda Dromois, uh, we have these very strange structures uh, which are different from anything we know today. So, can we call that feathers as well, or uh, is it time to uh, develop a, a, a different term for these? Um, yeah, these I'm not exactly a fan of, of the word proto feather when it comes to yeah. stuff like that because it, it does imply that it's on the road to becoming a branching feather like we have on birds yeah. and that's really just how evolution works I think um, uh, Andrea Kau uh, buzz that is usually what one. I go for yeah but I'm more of a fuzz guy I actually prefer the term buzz hey, fuzz because it, it sounds faster yeah. to say it you know and mm -hmm. less uh, no offense but less Sophisticated or less verbose. You'll get my phone eventually. Yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. <laughs> uh, now, uh, I think we've done pretty good at covering feathers well, and stuff like that. Uh, um, just one more thing. About oh, yeah, one more thing. So, oh, oh. Uh, for example, uh, I, I really don't like when people are saying, for example, or illustrating the dinosaurs like. So we have Triceratops. We have uh, a yeah. really big uh, scaly integument from tricer Triceratops. And uh, like they say mm -hmm. that, uh, for example, Pachyrhinosaurus... Uh, Don't murder nobody online, okay? Don't die. Please. So, oh god, this is like a horror movie. They so, say that Pachyrhinosaurus... Yeah, so, for example, Pachyrhinosaurus couldn't have feathers because we have Triceratops. 
and for example Chasmosaurus or uh, Centrosaurus but just imagine if we only had some uh, skin integument from modern rhinos or elephants mm -hmm. uh, like we have the Asian and the African elephant which are totally uh, not totally but uh, pretty much uh, uh, fur less so they have mm -hmm. a little fur but uh, it's not really uh, good for uh, fossilized so oh, maybe it's, it's, not, it's not noticeable yeah and uh, it wouldn't fossilize i think and uh, like then when uh, you find some mammoth bones and mammoth lived in a really uh, cold climate and we have only the modern rhinos which live in a very uh, hot climate pretty much like pachyrhinosaurus and triceratops so would you right. uh, illustrate uh, mammoths and hooli rhinos with without fur based on this simply because you found we found one specimen that doesn't have it yeah yeah i but get what you're saying and i agree even uh, multiple if i were to play species, devil's advocate like even multiple species if i were to play devil's advocate though yeah um one one could make the same argument though uh regarding u tyrannus because i've heard a lot of people make the argument that oh u tyrannus uh, isn't proof that T-Rex had feathers because it lived in a cold climate and all that stuff. Um, Which is not true, by the way. But not not entirely true. Not not cold. Maybe temperate, but not not quite cold. Yeah. Not anywhere to the extent that uh, mammoths were evolving hair in. So, um, yeah, I think that point's not very good. Um, so, uh, um, in regard in um, regard to Tyrannosaurus. But I, I often make a, a similar point by uh, by saying, uh, imagine what would have happened uh, to paleo art if the first dinosaurs we knew came uh, from uh, from China, the, the feathered dinosaurs. How would uh, dinosaurs oh, look today? Yeah. Oh, I, I I like this. I, I like this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, imagine like today we usually, and uh, I, I don't know if we do this in regards to evidence or not but usually if there's no feathers found on an animal the general like default is okay just make it scaly yeah. but given what we know about it why, why is scales why is scales really the default for animals that we don't have integument for when uh, yeah. we know at least that even the oldest dinosaurs probably had some sort of feather and like like structure on for, for example, like, like, like uh, ear raptor or uh, I don't know, herosaurus should be like uh, pretty much feathered because they are um, mm -hmm. pretty basal. So yeah, yeah. Um, at least so yeah, uh, I wonder if, we, if the first dinosaurs we found were animals like Archaeopteryx and Ankyornis and uh, these Chinese specimens. I I would I would wonder if today we would be thinking that if we don't find any direct evidence of scales on an animal, we should assume that it was feathered. Yeah. Same with uh, Mosasaur flukes, for example. Yeah. We, uh, when, when first found, Mosasaurs were just assumed to have this really long tail paddle yeah. and, not, and not flukes, even though uh, most, uh, most completely aquatic animals have some sort of fluke. Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's important to make a dis, um, distinction between uh, evidence and uh, artistic traditions at this point. Yeah, right. And um, yeah, I think, and paleo oh, art is uh, unfortunately a lot, a lot of tradition. Oh, yeah. you you basically mean what we think and uh, what we find versus paleo memes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, paleo art is. A large cluster of memes. Uh, well, memes well, at basically. least not, not the fresh paleo memes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like uh, Greg Paul says that um, all pieces of paleo art uh, depicting a certain animal should end up looking about the same if we're to follow the evidence. And I really disagree with that because 
take an animal like Allosaurus. There's so little we know about Allosaurus in terms of how it looked in life. Why should every reconstruction of it look exactly the same if we know so little about it? There's plenty of room for speculation on this animal. Yeah, well, I think for example, yeah, like waffles and well probably some little crest. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the possibility of a much larger crest or perhaps a soft tissue structure. Um, given yeah. the extensions of blood vessels past the crest on the animal, that could mean that it could change the color of its crest. It could mean that it had a larger crest. It could mean that it had waddles. There's so many options, and to say that there's just one reconstruction of Allosaurus you can do that could be considered accurate yeah, uh, based on what we've nice That's why in popular culture, Allosaurus is kind of like a light version of Tyrannosaurus. With yeah. It's slightly bigger clothes. Yeah, even uh, in, in popular in culture, Tyrannosaurus is Coke and Allosaurus is Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, also. Um, uh, okay. No. Yeah, turn, turn to cool. It's it's Manus Bundle's Giga that is the best one. <laughs> Manus Bundle's Giga. Oh, Guys, everybody best. knows. Everybody knows that the best theropod is Cryolophosaurus. I don't know why we're having this debate right now. No, no, no. You are all wrong. It's Scrotum humanum. Shut oh, up. Yeah. Scrotum humanum. I got a better one. It's best one is Urinata montanus. What about oh, uh, Erectopus? Yeah. My favorite theropod is Erectopus. No. Oh, Erectopus. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I love that yeah. one picture that Dominic made about Erectopus. You guys have seen it? No. Mm -hmm. Sadly. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. cool. yeah, you, you can already guess what it is. I mean, cool. Another thing that people have a better lookout when it comes to paleo art is they need to people need to do more research as to what the environment certain animals lived in oh, was yeah. like they draw yeah. things but the uh, spine source i feel like it's a big little, every little leaf and give it some dynamics and geometry yeah. you know <laughs> stop it. dynamics and geometry stop it <laughs> <laughs> but um speaking of environment Oh, um, of uh, a lot of misplacement when it comes to environment. But, uh, what we know about but, the place where Spinosaurus lived is it was kind of a mangrove swamp-like area, a big mud flat. Yet it's what are you doing, almost bro? always oh. depicted in some sort of desert area. Strangely yeah, enough, yeah. despite what we know about its watery uh, affinities. Even documentaries, like for example, of environment, from dinosaur yeah. or we see in popular in popular culture. Sorry for mentioning that again, but. It's mm -hmm. most of the dinosaur tem areas, you know, and the Mesozoic are depicted as wastelands full of volcanoes and palm trees. Yeah. Sadly. And yeah. there's a lot yeah, of also, there's a like, lot of ecosystems, beautiful like common, ecosystems back in the Mesozoic. Why don't we use that? It's like it's like a common eighties, nineties thing. If it's like a desert sort of wasteland with volcanoes and it sand dunes and rocks and canyons or on the other side it could be like a swamp of jungles and something like this is both basically like the two <laughs> like the two extremes of the 80s 90s paleo art in terms of um, environment and it's sad to see yeah. sometimes these days going on yeah i see it a lot with archaeopteryx i know i mentioned spinosaurus before but oh, i think yes. i take that back archaeopteryx is displaced all the time yeah, it's always yeah, put yeah. in like a big forest full of trees. When uh, yeah, yeah, in reality, it lived in a desert island, a, re a very arid, deserty island. Yeah, some uh, uh, that didn't have any plants that were open. Oh, um, speaking mm -hmm. of that, um, you know, so it was um, kind of like uh, I don't know. on art. So he's currently working on a drawing of Archaeopteryx, which isn't displaced in uh, such an environment, but he's actually putting it into like, um, you know, desert island with, with uh, Mediterranean type plants, something like that. So That's I thought good. he's currently doing that. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I see it a lot on beaches too. And, and, uh, and, uh, all right. Uh, all right uh, I, uh, 
I think it's time to move on to scales. Oh, wait. Uh, wait, no. wait, before we move to scales, I yeah, got yeah. a last thing to add on. Um, I do too. So go ahead. Well, is, is there some news about, or is there a paper about these so called uh, federal receptors gene and crocodile genes? I heard this a lot, but I, I haven't. I heard any that a long time ago too. I haven't by any uh, I was going to say uh, uh, I I forgot to mention this, but uh, we have to know what type of feathers to put on what dinosaur. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. for uh, I mean, feathers are a very diverse group of uh, integumentary structures, but uh, you you probably shouldn't go around putting a uh, full flight feathers on a. Uh, on animals like a triceratops or yeah. ceratops, and you should probably stick yeah. with the well, hair-like okay. filaments. And, and in the same way, if you're drawing an animal like a velociraptor, you probably shouldn't give it like really hairy wings instead of feathery oh, ones. Also, it turns out that uh, tyrannosaurs, uh, uh, like Dilong, right? had yeah. a stage mm -hmm. three feathers. Yeah, yeah, I heard that too. Uh, Preservation does a lot of bad things to feathers. I think there was an experiment done on uh, house wrens where yeah. where they were buried and preserved in different ways and their feathers became more, more hair and, and less and less complex. So uh, that's something also to bear in mind. I think uh, the best way we can sum up our, our thought on, fe on feathers is uh, you're pretty much excused to give feathers to pretty much any dinosaur you want but just in varying degrees you may want to figure out what its close relatives have in terms of integument if you have an animal like a hadrosaur that is extremely scaly from what we know you would probably be better off putting uh, a very fine amount of feathers yeah very there. fine feathers like, like yeah. elephant fur like elephant hair like elephant exactly uh, then go to Abelosaurs. Oh, man. Uh, regarding Abelosaurs, uh, I read, the, uh, according to the original description of Carnotaurus, it seems that uh, you can probably infer that they're talking about scales, but just a fun fact, they never actually specifically say scales. Uh, well, they they just say bumps. Uh, also, as so, far oh. as I know, it's... Uh from the belly area and uh, on the side of the tail, so the upper side could be uh, feathered as well. So yeah, it's, it's in a place where most theropods aren't feathered, from what we know. Uh, the belly and underside of the tail region seems to be a, a place where many animals lose feathers for thermoregulation. Even ostriches who that live in very hot yeah. climates, uh, they don't have any feathers under their armpit or, or on their belly. Or I Ornithomimosaurs, the recent discovery of the feathered specimen, mm -hmm. that the skin, uh, bare skin on its belly and legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Skin, a bare skin, mind you, not scales. Bare skin. Let's not forget about the beam yeah, that, in the room. Yeah, that, that comments on the whole uh, false dichotomy of either feathers or scales. The, first of all, it's you, probably both. In most cases, and second of all, there's more than just feathers and scales when it comes to anatomical structures. We have the skin, yeah. for uh, for example. All right. right. Uh, anybody have anything else to say regarding feathers? Stop it with the main crows. Oh. Maybe something like, like variation within groups like resource, something like that. Mm hmm. I think Scott Hartman right now is working on a paper uh, about the uh, possibility of early, early uh, Triassic, uh, I mean, not tri early Jurassic prosauropods independently losing a lot of feathers uh, because of heat. The late Triassic and early Jurassic were some of the hottest times uh, in the Mesozoic. So, um, yeah, mm, I can. I can sense that a lot of people may use that argument to go against the Tyrannosaur with feathers thing. Yeah. You know, that one, but, uh, 
Yeah. My counter to that, though, would be that um, we're talking about a whole different ball game in terms of feathers. Um, Tyrannosaurs have uh, stage three pinaceous feathers, which are a lot harder to uh, to get rid of as just the hair-like filaments that uh, early dinosaurs would start of, uh, having. Valley yeah. fun, so, actually. Uh, it would be it would be easier for an animal like a uh, like a prosauropod to lose its filaments than it would be for an animal like Tyrannosaurus to lose its very complicated uh, pinaceous feathers. Yeah, uh, and still, I'd like to contend that uh, I I find it very unlikely to think that any particular group of dinosaur would lose all of its feathers. Yeah, uh, I'd say it's more likely they simply reduce them. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, like modern mammals. Yeah. Like we can see that yeah, mammals. Mammal. Yeah. Hmm. Most of it, it takes quite the extreme air. environmentary pressures to to make someone lose their uh, basal integument. Uh, also, even whales have lost all of their fur. Yeah, they have yeah, whiskers. The thing about feathers is that they are kind of superior in terms of uh, what was the term? Insulation. Mm -hmm. They are so, they are very good. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, Unlike fur. Yeah, you can use feathers uh, for many different things. Like uh, there are like peacocks with their uh, feather uh, using their feathers for display, or uh, you can use feathers for thermal regulation, like emus do, or, or sensory mm -hmm. stimuli. Like yeah, here, uh, like here with whiskers. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the fur doesn't go feathers, that far. Feathers are wonderful things. Yep. Meanwhile, fur doesn't go that far, sadly. Yeah. Fur sucks. Fur just makes you hot, and it's sweaty and gross, and I hate it. Uh, no, actually, in uh, fur Bird, has birds uh, rule, mammals very rule. Fur has often very similar abilities to feathers, but not to that extent as we see it in feathers. So um, mm -hmm. there are similar um, effects uh, observed, for example, uh, in uh, kangaroos. There is a study about uh, the attachment of kangaroos and emus, and they compare um, how much uh, uh, the, the, the cooling works and. Uh, that's interesting. I, I I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, I think that's a good segue into uh, the next type of integument that we'll be talking about tonight, which is scales. Um. Uh, I, I'm find the I find the uh, scaly tails. And dinosaurs like Kalinda Dromius and Concavenator would be very interesting. They seem to have a pseudo crocodile li uh, like type of uh, scales on the tail. Uh, and yeah. Concavenator, the, the top of the tail, uh, the dorsal area of the tail is covered in the alpha keratin reticula scales, uh, which were probably independently evolved from uh, structures on the skin. And then on the bottom of it, it has a uh, scuda, which are very, very uh, modified feathers um, lining the bottom of the tail to make a kind of uh, a crocodile like effect. Now, I don't I uh, very much do not think that uh, crocodile tails are basal to Archosauria. I think it's more of a uh, type of conversion, a bit of a coincidence. But it is something interesting to note um, the mm -hmm. naked tails in, in some of these dinosaurs. Yeah. But, uh, for example, you have like T Long or U Tyrannus, where uh, mm -hmm. only the uh, underside mm -hmm. of the tail had some bare skin or scales, and mm -hmm. the upper side was yeah. feathered. So, you can't really say that uh, if a dinosaur has uh, scales or bare skin on the tail, uh, that means. Uh, the full tail was like a rat or the saurian t-rexes yeah as much as i love saurian uh i i'm not that big of a fan of uh what they've done with their t tyrannosaurus 
uh, it's it's in no way a build a deal breaker to me, but uh, I do think that it would be more likely to have uh, feathers going all the way down to the end of the tail, uh, kind of obscuring the bottom and having I the think bottom be naked. More of uh, you know to get more audiences and don't think that oh it's so feather it's up now, you know to <laughs> to get a more demographic. Uh, yeah, perhaps, perhaps. I think that's the same reason that they avoided uh, putting too many, uh, make, making their pachycephalosaurs that uh, fuzzy. Yeah. Well, it's not possible. Even though I really like fuzzy pachy. They look like dragon goats or something. Yeah, pachys are yeah. great. Pachys <laughs> are probably my favorite. I want to go to Bob. Fuzz or pachycephalosaurs. I mean, maybe to a degree like we see it on Psychic. Solars, but maybe not too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are all uh, machinocephalians, so we got to stick to uh, what we know from other members of this group. Also, they yeah, add, if you're, added the if, if uh, you could... added Sorry, the, uh, It's not impossible, but I mean, yeah, I think it's it's a thing. Uh, I'd say that we don't really people. have okay. enough good information on the subject to uh. Yeah. To decide whether or not I mean, it could be like uh, the same thing with mammoths and uh, stuff like that. Um, also, cetacosaurs and uh, and pachycephalosaurs are performing a very different niche. So there is a there is a chance that different types of integument would be find, uh, found in different types of them. But uh, uh, to vary. Um, they added the uh, patagia. On the legs, you know, but uh, mm. they say they won't add the quills uh, to the tail or something because it might be uh, like a, a display structure. But what if the mm. patagia on the leg were display structures too? So I don't really understand this uh, thing with the feathers and the patagia thing on Pachycephalosaurus. Patagiums are. Your patagiums are kind of interesting uh, when it comes to dinosaurs. I think it's a new realm of speculation we need to go into. Because uh, I think, uh, if I'm correct, we found some patagiums on uh, Anchiornis as well. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Speaking of new areas well, think, of speculation... Um, uh, go ahead. Cough, cough. Uh, um, so, um, I <laughs> that dinosaurus is basically just like a walking... I mean, first of all, because we've got like, um, I think the way the filaments are placed is kind of specialized. I mean, it's kind of unusual that they are just yeah. in this area specifically. So they are so play. Then, in addition, we got yeah, the um, Eurocotagium. Uh... Yeah, the mm -hmm. Eurocotagium at the hind legs. So um, that as well, which, which are brightly yellowish colored. So, certainly mm -hmm. for display um, use uh, as well. And mm -hmm. in addition to that dark color of the cloaca, which is, well, and it's, oh. it's pretty obviously for sexual display in this area, uh, yeah. to the most obvious degree, which mainly due to the placement as well. So uh, we got that as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm interested to see, uh, it's, it's strange to me with all of the possibilities of different varying levels of integument on all these different groups of dinosaurs. Uh, that we see people uh, feathering them in the same way, put it, uh, putting them in the same amount, uh, like the naked tails on saurian, on saurian tyrannosaurs. We see a lot of tyrannosaurs now with naked tails and feathers that don't cover the entire head, uh, that just have the entire, that just completely match saurian's version. When I think there's a lot of room to speculate on the amount and the intensity and the type of feathers. Oh man, oh man, saurian make a meme. Yeah. So I think, did a meme. So the did a problem meme. is, the problem yeah, is with the cheeks, for example, too lazy, mm. too lazy and too angsty to speculate for themselves, to think for themselves. So they're just yeah. thinking, just thinking. Well, this is to all you just, aspiring paleo artists out there, uh, don't be afraid to get wild with the in, with with uh, with the the integument. I, I, I want to see some new stuff. I, 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 want, I don't want to see more of the old. I want to see some new. After all, I mean, Sauron is not inaccurate, but the thing with Sauron is it's it, it's a possibility. So it doesn't it have to be like the truth. So what I am hold was like in the past. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah. yeah. Just, just Mr. Mark Witten said. Uh, and as Mark this is Witten going said. to sound a little bit childish, but mm -hmm. and talking about wild integument, do you think that neck frills on dinosaurs are still way far off? Hmm. Uh, I don't know if we have enough information to decide one way or the other on something like a neck frill. We don't have any Archosaurian examples of anything like that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say it's impossible. But um, it, yeah, it would be it would be in the realms of wild speculation without any direct evidence. But um. I think it's talking like um, like a neck full as in full lizards as in mm -hmm. Jurassic Park with the Lophosaurus. Um, I mean, the thing is, muscle attachment points are needed on the skull and... Oh yeah, that, that is a good point. They are lacking on dinosaurs, so the dinosaurs that we know. So probably mm -hmm. they wouldn't be a structure like this, but maybe like skin flaps or something that aren't able to, uh, you know, they aren't able to be animated. I way, would you know, say... Like, I would say better bet when when speculating on skin tissue like that would be uh, bird-like caruncles and stuff like that, waddles yeah. and uh, uh, so, I mean, and loose bit of skin, snoods. The thread is possible, but it would be not able to move like this. So uh, more like yeah. head for, for, for example, turkeys can move their uh, skin things on the head, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, right. On the beak, or uh, over the beak, so it's kind of interesting. There are certain uh, some adaptations required for something like that, and mm -hmm. I think in a lot of dinosaurs, the adaptations are lacking for such a structure in the neck area. And mm -hmm. what's uh, what I also want to point out, it's not that bad that Jurassic Park did this because. They did it to speculate. I mean, also the uh, venom spitting thing, uh, Crichton yeah. used in the thought, it was just for speculation, to bring speculation into paleontology to the public. Now, on the other side, it's maybe a bad idea to bring it to the general public because the general public mm. is taking it for word because yeah. they're thinking, oh, it's going to be it's, true. It's a double edged sword, yeah, yeah. in a way. This is also why I think, um, for example, when you're like, um, in general, when you're presenting uh, to a general public with instructions, you should go more conservative, not too speculative. Yeah, I think I think a, one really good thing to do when it comes to uh, the general the the general public, the best way <coughs> for the general public to get an idea of what we know about dinosaurs is to not just show them one reconstruction of an animal, but to show them many different ones, all of them to varying degrees of speculation and conservatism. And let them sh and show them like, hey, th we don't know exactly what this animal looked like. We here are a bunch of different ideas, none of which are particularly wrong based on what we know now. For example, uh, the, the, this is the best idea. That's ever. the beauty of failure. Yeah, like prehistoric yeah. kingdom tyrannosaurs, where uh, there are like different skins, which are <laughs> equally probable. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Oh, okay, goodbye, top of heart. Um, uh, another thing that I would like to see a lot more of in paleo art that uh, uh, I've been thinking about that nobody else has really explored is crops. Uh, what? Crops, like a, a bird store their food in their crop and uh, use it to feed it to their offspring. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you mean, they can expand you mean, it. Oh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, we found oh, a didn't they use like that, that in a uh, documentary? Prehistoric park that uh, there were sauropods who were fed frogs oh, really? for digestive purposes. Mm -hmm. I, you guys, I don't uh, read that part. You guys remember prehistoric park, right? I do. Yeah, well, I don't remember what scene. I don't remember what scene you're talking about. No, it's been a while since I've seen it, though. I'll try to find it and I link you later on. Okay. Damn you, Nigel Marvin. Well, be, yeah, yeah, crops to, uh, have this very strong visual presence on a bird. If you remove the crop from a bird, uh, some birds can make oh, yeah. it look a big hole in their chest now. So uh, they, they have a visual presence. They can be used uh, not only to store food, but as a display. 
expand their to make food. I don't like, want to say inflate, but expand their crops to make them seem a lot larger in the throat than they really are. Uh, so I also, think uh, I'd like to see some crop speculation. I so, want to see some inflate uh, throated uh, dinosaurs. To be and honest, we I, and I, I think Brachylophosaurus, based on the documentary at least, uh, had mm -hmm. uh, this crop. Thing. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, uh, it does seem that this uh, Edmontosaur called Brachylophosaurus did have uh, a crop in it. So that could lead us to speculate. Uh, I mean, it, there is the possibility that it's independently evolved. But I'd say that the, the chance does exist that perhaps this is a basal trait. Perhaps even Pterosaurus had a had crop. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I like uh, that. Yeah, I mean, we're getting, we're getting into the skin tissue uh, part of yeah. the discussion. Oh man, oh man. Is green the field is called skin color for dinosaurs? Oh yeah, skin color. Um, uh, I know a lot about uh, feather color and the different things that cause uh, feathers to become colored. I don't know that much about skin though. I know that because skin is layered, it can it can achieve structural coloration, uh, like feathers can and scales can. For example, ba baboons, the mandrill. Yeah, uh, even though fur doesn't right give too much face. color to mammals, skin can yeah. produce a liver, some bright one, like yeah. baboons, blue butt. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's always a uh, interesting thing to keep in mind. Um, Let's see, what else was I going to talk about? <laughs> um, what about? I mean, oh, yeah, more let's popular see. culture, sorry to bring up again that topic, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> in popular culture, most dinosaurs are currently depicted with green skin mm -hmm. most of the time, to the point that green is actually synonymous with dinosaur. Yeah. I don't know if that's still a thing to this new century, but that's what I think. A lot of Jurassic Park dinosaurs have this strange, wrinkly skin that, uh, yeah. it's kind of weird. Because uh, uh, <laughs> I think it's, I think this kind of, uh, yeah. the, like, like the 90s, like, compared well, to... They, they are germs. really you know, the scrotum humanums, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it was even like this one, and uh, behind the scene, uh, red on the Apatosaurus from Jurassic World, where they explained why they've chosen this weird kind of skin texture for the Apatosaurus. And we mm -hmm. said by it's by like elf uh, from elephants, they got inspiration and rhinos. And I was like, this is actually not a good idea, like using uh, like mammals as an inspiration just because it's a big animal, it has thick skin, but <laughs> it's not a mammal. Like, They're <laughs> both big, ergo, they both had the exact same ecological niche. Yeah, this is like it's like this cookie crisp commercial. Like it's it like it's, it's it looks like cookies and tastes like them, but it's um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's flakes and all it's the same thing. Speaking uh, of lying commercials, two you can't follow your nose if you're a toucan because toucans don't have a sense of smell. No, no. The more you know. <laughs> Ready, oh, no. Right. Uh, Time yeah. to get into what I think will be the most controversial part of this episode. I have uh, one more thing. I have, I have one more thing. Hold up. Hold up a second, dude. Hold up holding, a second. Up. I'm holding. Okay, so getting back to pigmentation. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thing. So, what we know is there's, like, when we are looking at fossil and melanin, so we got three types of melanin. So we got the eumelanin, which is rod shaped, elongated, which indicates dark gray or black. We got the mm -hmm. pheomelanin, which is spheroid, like tiny, you know, oranges or something. They are, are uh, indicating yellowish colorations. And there's a mixed melanin, which is like uh, spheroid in a way, but kind of rod shaped, more like eggs in a way. And these reddish brownish colors. But the thing is, we can't indicate all colorations from these. These are just the melanin. So we got just got like black, brownish, yellowish. But on the other side, like things like blue or green or red, these are like, I mean, reddish, for example, carrot, uh, car car carotene, whatever. Uh, we, I mean, there are some, 
This is something they get yeah, from Yeah, Kratnoids. And, Kratnoids. Yeah. And, dang. <laughs> and, like, for example, um, like, greenish or blue. This is more like... This is due to, like, the way yeah. light is uh, broken by, uh, by the surface. It's like, the way light is reflected. And I once had an argument with someone on, you know, the idol is T-Rex, but it shouldn't have, like... Yeah green feathers. I was like, well, green is a good coloration for camouflage, that kind of stuff. But, well, mm -hmm. I mean, if it has, like, um, well, okay, Tyrannosaurus had stage 3 feathers, but uh, the idle one has more proto -feather like feathers. And the thing is, mm -hmm. feathers that primitive won't be able to, you know, have structures that are complex enough to reflect yeah. light in such a way. Therefore, it's impossible. The only possible way to have such a coloration is by storing in within the feathers. Yeah. So this, this is and, one uh, I want to say something that. Right. Yeah. I want to say something that Matt Martinuk said in his book, uh, Field Guide to Mesozoic Birds. He said that when when you're doing the color of an animal, you are making a direct statement about the animal's diet. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you can extract a lot on what color an animal is by what food they eat. For example, if if an animal has a lot of carotenoids in its color, it's probably eating a lot of plants. Uh, if it has, if it's got red on it, it's probably getting carotenoids from some type of fish, perhaps salmon, uh, stuff oh, like that. Oh, did um, the flamingos? Oh, did the flamingos get their pink coloring anyway? What? what uh, Crustaceans, they, they get it from the plankton that they eat. It has red carotenoids in it. Yeah. yeah I really like to see more paleo or portraying pink dinosaurs. Uh, it's, uh, I try to find a way around that because pink is a hard color to get uh, in animals. But uh, in a velociraptor painting I recently did, I made it sunset, and I made the animal's color a kind of a light white, so they kind of looked pinkish, even though they weren't really. Oh, man. Uh, what, We're going to what, link hmm. that picture in the description, so everyone can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, oh, and, uh, one last thing regarding uh, color. Usually, if you... if you want to get a kind of good idea. This isn't a 100% foolproof strategy. In fact, uh, uh -huh. it doesn't take into account for a lot of different things like a carotenoid and structural color. But if you want a, a little bit of a starting point on what color an animal was, uh, if it's an animal that has fossilized integument, sometimes the color of the integument stain on the rock can give away uh, the life color. Because uh, most of the time, uh, with exceptions like Archaeopteryx and Sonhoven and things, most of the time, uh, the feather impressions we get are actually just melanin that has pressed into the rock and has stained it. So sometimes you can get a vague idea of at least what parts of the animal was uh, was darker and lighter colored. Yeah, you can see that in melanin stains on the rock. Yeah, you can see that in Sinosauropteryx, for example. Yes. Oh man. Oh yeah. It's it's like good. Like a neat color scheme. Uh, also, this tapi charred or tapi hard, I don't know. Uh, like, it's really interesting that based on the mel, uh, the melanin, the melanosomes, uh, it had a pretty um, like a reddish crest and black or dark uh, gray. Uh, Pick the Feathers. fibers. So fibers. exactly what so, walking as dinosaurs produces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, well, it's really interesting. Even do the Simpsons predicted it. Oh yeah. <laughs> on the other, on the, walking with dinosaurs predicted the other, Tapaharas. On the other side, it's kind of interesting that yeah. these soft grass well, were made of um, walking with fibers. dinosaurs predicted a new iguanodontian species or something. I'm not familiar. There. There's one. There's one thing I want to add, which is that um, I heard from Midi that um, non neonates, I think it was, can't um, they can't like put the things like the carat the carotenoids into their feathers, so you're not going to get like pink dinochiros. 
which is why I didn't put any pink in my Dynakyrus. <laughs> um, it, I, I kind of, I mean, it was kind of unexpected to me that um, the soft tissue in within the crest of this tapicarid, 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 whatever, uh, was actually made of fibers. So this this kind of baffled me because I didn't expect something like that. I actually um, expected something more like a, um, you know, a solid structure in a way, but instead we get like. You know, something made of fibers, and it was like, well, I mean, it's like, it's like rhino horn in a way. So, it's kind of weird, but it's interesting. Yeah. Makes also one how it may have looked like. Guys, is screen uh, sharing in the moment working? Because I'm actually working on a um, chapter share read in the moment. We, um, the fibers are going from like, um, so it's this back spine, um, so this, um, yeah, at the base of the head. So, um, this one from, I think they were growing from there to like, um, inside into the rest of the crest. Kind of weird in a way. It's hard to explain actually. It's, um, it's, um, you know, either when we have something to look at, it's really hard to describe. <laughs> yeah, if, if in any way possible, guys, look up that video uh, of the talk about the tapestry uh, soft t uh, tissue preservation. It's um, awesome stuff. So I'm kind of curious about about the Tyrannosaur feathers mentioned earlier. Are they like um, ostrich feathers now, or, or is it just that it's like a bunch of filaments coming from a single like root system or whatever? I'm not entirely sure about uh, kind of <laughs> like an emus. Uh, that's not far off from how we construct them so far. I mean, um, stage three already got like this, um, which I think that was more. I kind of like, you know, what do you expect from a typical feather in the way it's looked overall? Like that, or also uh, like downy feathers with extra brown shades. Like kind of um, stage three, if I recall it correctly. I'm not entirely sure. So, um, yeah, on integument, what is? Uh, cheeks, for example. Cheeks are like a big topic. Yeah, and the Saurian again. Like, everyone was uh, copying Saurian with the cheekless Ornithiscians. Oh, I, I think that's something that's happened before already. Okay, I'm back, guys. And, and it Kirby's turned. Back. Oh, uh, yeah. We're talking about cheeks. I dropped for a second. Oh, uh, hello, Kirby. Hey! So, uh, Where is Greenland? Uh, we're talking about cheeks right now. Okay. The cool, influence cool. of Saurian, so that everyone was copying Saurian's uh, cheekless uh, triceratops. Yeah, I know. And that. Uh, it turns out that they had like muscle attachments on the lower and the upper jaw. And, oh, uh, really? So, so they didn't oh. have uh, cheeks in the. Uh, like mammal cheeks, but with muscles. Uh, and uh, uh, stegosaurs and ankylosaurs seem to have this too. Wait, so they I did not know that. Like cheeks with... So they actually had cheeks with musculature, like mammals or parrots, for example. No. I, I mean, like uh, mammals, I for example. That. I mean, mammals, for example, they have a muscular cycle. Nubularis, this um, yeah, this, this one cheek muscle, whereas uh, um, in parrots, this pseudo masseter. And there was once this uh, theory by I think Paul Serino came up with it that Psychosaurus had also like 
some kind of pseudo messenger evolve independently from the one uh, known from parrots by simply judging uh, the musculature we know from parrot skulls onto cytosols, whereas this would have been yeah, evolved independently and, and it, it, it's kind of structured. So mm -hmm. at some point it was thought to be unlikely because it needs extreme, um, extreme adaptation. But I mean, if there actually is then, uh, you know, muscle attachment points in the scalp, this is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Well, I, I so think that actually that uh, there was a new uh, publication, a new paper on the charm muscles of Psittacosaurus and uh, based on it, it, this, uh, they had uh, these uh, pseudomasseter-like muscles that's awesome. Oh, so they actually had to the method. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that is interesting. I, I did not know that. Then yeah, again, so I haven't I, read I, I it into dinosaur cheeks. Yeah. I think ankylosaurs also had, like, maybe, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what it was. I think it maybe was a bone. I'm going to look it up in it for a second. So, I'm going to you back. Gosh. Mm -hmm. I could rework all my own Christian drawings. What, what, what? Oh, cheeky I was given mine cheeks all along. I win. Well, I am not sure if all of them, like uh, Saurian, uh, removed the cheek from Anatosaurus. So uh, mm. I'm pretty sure, like, also Pac uh, Pachycephalosaurus doesn't have cheeks. So uh, I okay. think these ones uh, didn't have these muscle attachments. Yeah, but Which in the, the case of the Montosaurus, uh, that will probably change too, for reasons I can't talk about. Oh, exciting. Oh. Exciting. Hopefully. Oh, uh, this is another soft wait, tissue. Wait, which one? Thing, yeah. Which animal are you talking about? At Montosaurus. Oh. Probably. Oh. We will see. Oh, well. Future might get a little bit cheeky. <laughs> Well, I really, really hope that it's a, f a mummified hadrosaur with cheeks. That, that would, would be awesome. awesome. Yeah. I'm I'm waiting for a, a baby theropod head in amber, a non-bird theropod in amber, or at least that a non-beak be theropod awesome. in amber, because I want to end this whole lip debate. I want to I want to find out. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. That's some high expectation. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of lips, uh, I once uh, was arguing uh, about lips with somebody on a on a face on an infamous Facebook group that I will not name here, but I think you all know uh, what right. it is. And uh, uh, yeah, I can't they were you they said that if we're going to put lips on dinosaurs, then we also have to put lips on pterosaurs. Uh, well, oh, that's so yeah, that's uh, that's probably wrong <laughs> but when you have like over, overlapping teeth <laughs> like uh, crocodiles uh, i think it's pretty reasonable that they didn't have lips like yeah. like in the meanest kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i think like things like roy suki and what lips either and yeah, also and all that probably had yeah. a I think it was his argument that crocs don't have lips because they are um, constantly keeping their uh, enamel moisture. But as it turned out, I mean, they, they aren't really that aquatic as animals. So no, they, they spend most they of their time have... actually on land in a burrow. And exactly. I mean, therefore, it's not. Uh, yeah, but it's, and you can also apply this to other groups of animals. For example, like um, like uh, saber-toothed cats. For example, I mean, they're probably. Uh, maybe they didn't have like these bulldog things that they are speculated for a while. Yeah, I think it was also already debunked. Oh I yeah, it, it was a paleo meme too. Like everyone yeah, Mark, yeah. Mark wanted Whitten, to draw. Uh, it. Debated Dwayne Nash on that on one of his blogs. Uh, his blog on dinosaur lips. Uh, him and uh, Dwayne Nash in the comment walk. system in the comment section talked back and forth about saber tooth lips, and even Dwayne <laughs> Nash admitted that yeah, it's probably unlikely. So, well, uh, as uh, Mark Whitten pointed out, uh, uh, as soon as the teeth um, extend over the, the, the jaws uh, by, by a few percent, um, it's very unlikely that they were still covered um, in, in, in lip or similar tissue. So uh, I think we see that a lot in, in pterosaurs, and it's uh, 
therefore unlikely that these were covered in lips, mm -hmm. especially when we look at, at species like uh, Gnatosaurus or uh, Pterodostro, uh, mm -hmm. where we have teeth so long that um, it's, it's, uh, it, it makes just no sense. Yeah, most animals with interlocking teeth don't have lips, and I'm pretty yeah. sure every toothed pterosaur is interlocking. I might be mammals. wrong. Is dimorphodon yeah, interlocking? Mammals. It, uh, does dimorphodon okay. have interlocking teeth? I don't think it does. Okay. I don't think it okay. does. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm looking look at other mammals, example, like boars, for example, like baby roosters. I'm not sure if they have like the same coverage on their teeth. So the same surface as you know, like normal usual teeth. So, but but I'm, no. I mean, if I don't need it there. So there's a mask of the year, like it it has its teeth sticking out of the mouth, like saber tooth cats. I know that at least proboscids, and they um they have a different covering on their teeth, so. Yeah, this is a different case, but I'm not sure about like mosquitoes and boars. And I guess it's the same as with the yeah, they are with these, But this is know. this is a little bit off topic, uh, but uh, I just want to say real quick to uh, to all aspiring paleo artists out there, please do not make your dimorphodon look like a puffin. Oh And, yeah. oh, and man, also, oh, please do not make your velociraptor look like a bearded vulture. Please don't oh. make your oviraptor look like a cassowary. No, yeah. no, 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 It's okay to use real life animal coat patterns as inspiration for paleo art, but try not to make it look exactly like the real animal. Because it is highly you know, unlikely. No, notice, uh, yeah. notice similarities in, uh, in coat patterns and kind of play off that, but try to avoid just straight up making it look exactly like a modern yeah. Also, uh, try to look at different uh, animals that live in the yeah. same niche. And uh, yes. try to combine them. I mean, it's yeah, the most common and puffins don't really share a similar form. niche at all. In fact, the Morphodon was probably one of the more terrestrial of the pterosaurs. Uh, yeah, well, I, I would suggested say... that it could have had a uh, retractable claws, kind of like a cat. Yeah, I, I uh, would you, say that we um, should paint them like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Draw, draw it like a Bengal cat instead. Mm -hmm. That would be cooler, honestly. For oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we would appreciate the fun arts. Yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah. We've uh, yeah. covered yeah. quite a few great subjects tonight, huh? So there's one thing I kind of want to mention is what do you do with the, uh, the snout of the feather theropod? Like, um, do you make it scaly? Do you make it give it naked skin? Uh, I'd say that there's plenty of room for all different types of uh, speculation when it comes to that. That is why we need the. Uh, uh, um, yeah, that's why we need the, the, the theropod. Yeah. I'd say that uh, scale, skin, completely feathered. Uh, all of them are pretty much equally viable at this point, uh, based on what we know. Usually, I try to I try to match it up a little bit, try to m make it different for different animals. I did. Uh, I'm working on a Marshasaurus right now that has uh, feathers covering its entire face, uh, obscuring its mouth. It's got like a mustache of feathers. Uh, so that's kind of neat. But yeah, I'd say uh, pretty much anything, scales, feathers, skin, when but, it comes to theropod snouts but right for, now. For is, example, uh, like an, uh, like uh, many raptorans, like dromaeosaurs, I wouldn't do scales. Yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah. do that. I'd say dromaeosaurs probably had a fully feathered head. If they did have, if uh, uh, their snouts he... were exposed, it'd probably be skin and not scales. Yeah, for oh, example, cool. like Duane Nash is a uh, like vulture-like uh, dromaeosaurs. Yeah, I'd say that. I'd say Duane Nash's uh, vulture-like ones are more likely than scaly-headed ones. Uh, and yeah. also, I, I would like to mention that uh, 
you know, there was uh, this time when they told that Michael Raptor had this uh, tail, uh, not tail, but had a feather like a mohawk. And uh, yeah, now, uh, and oh it, yeah, the, the and, fake and, crest. And, and it turned out that it wasn't uh, mm -hmm. a, a crest like this. Uh, and then people started to saying that you shouldn't draw your drumming souls having these mohawk because it's uh, not accurate. But that if you look at modern day birds, like even birds of prey, you can see a wide range of uh, feathers yeah. and tegumens on the head. For example, uh, I'm not a fan of this one size fits all model when it comes to a. Yeah, a dinosaur yeah. and take me. There's a lot of diversity to take into consideration. For, for example, like happy eagles have these uh, crests on the head, or like oh, uh, Philippine yeah. eagles. Oh yeah, uh, the king vulture has some crazy headgear. Yeah. Yeah. And oh man, we should make you know, we should make dinosaur like the king vulture. Yeah, yeah. I'm working <laughs> on a sin raptor that has a, a pretty crazy waddly face. I love what they face it. Mm hmm Waddles. Waddles are good. Waddle. I hope you're listening, Jane. Waddles are good. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag uh, waddles are good. Now, uh, speaking of one size fits all, I do think that there are some cases where you should probably be a little bit more safe when it comes to it. Uh, for example, if we can... If, uh, if we find that one... Uh, or, or two or three species of Tyrannosaur have feathers, it's probably good to consider from that that all of them had it. And uh, if we find Dromaeosaurs uh, with primary feathers and, and wings that match up with modern bird wings, and most specimens of Dromaeosaurs uh, do have wings that look pretty much like a modern bird's wing, uh, it has primaries and everything. In fact, the, the, only one, the only one that doesn't is uh, a juvenile Sinanithosaurus. Yeah, it, Dave the Sinanithosaurus doesn't, but he's a juvenile, so yeah. you should probably but take others, that But other specimens of Sinanithosaurus have uh, primary feathers, so I think it's just uh, like a developmental stage, like when juveniles uh, don't have, and then they grow it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it would probably be a safe bet to assume that most, probably all dromaeosaurs had uh, had primary feathers. Also, if you count so the raptor, awesome. but that's not uh, really one size fits all. Because yeah, I mean, it's we have possible, possible. That some length. Yeah, it's not impossible. Uh, uh, unlikely. It would have, um, so I think, I think, but the thing is, um, um, we are, like, you know, presenting all the construction to, like, the general public, general and not, like, uh, there's a little bit of an echo <laughs> going on right now. Yeah, I, yeah, I hear it. I hear it. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yes, yeah, someone's yeah, echoing. Alright. Alright, it's, right, it's gone. gone. Alright, so I think the thing is, um, it depends to um, who you're presenting, you know, the construction, as I said earlier. If you're, like, presenting it, like, like it's, it's a normal, like, uh, um, general thing, and you're presenting it like to a general um, audience. You shouldn't go to speculator. I mean, in general, yeah. whatever yeah. trade. I, I do say that. And I mean, if it's like something like that, um, like for example, like like going with the vulture-headed Tromus source. Pardon me. Um, you shouldn't do that in this case because it's never going to be speculative real. And um, this is not the best way to let people approach dinosaurs for the first time. Yeah, if there, there, there are some instances more where it, it's warranted yeah. to, uh, I say if you're doing a technical diagram of an animal, or a drawing of an animal for a museum or something like that, you should probably stay a little bit more conservative and yeah. not go too yeah. out there with the speculation. What not too conservative, to like the Hungarian ones. That leads to a question, though. How, how speculative is too speculative when it comes to doing stuff like yeah. that? Would it would it be considered too speculative to give something like Allosaurus feathers for for a technical diagram? Or um, maybe not. I I don't think so. Like based on uh, that, it's really really likely that all dinosaurs had uh, 
feathers like their uh, common ancestor had feathers so if you consider that I think it uh, the thing that uh, if, if you don't give any feathers would be the thing that uh, is uh, more unlikely so yeah I would say that now uh, now we have that example but uh, by the same token if you took a sauropod and made it really really fluffy and feathery for a technical diagram would that be considered too speculative Yes, yeah, like we have scale impressions. Well, there's a difference. Yeah. Wrong approach. There's a difference between there's a difference between speculative and unbiased. Um, if you have absolutely no idea about the taxes um, covering, then you can go all out in some cases. But if you have an idea based on close relatives or even the same species, um, would it be too out there to base it on that um, instead of base it on something that's completely unrelated. I mean, would it be too out there to base it on something completely unrelated when you have this close relative that shows this? Yes, very true. Very yeah, true. of course. Hold up for a second. Hold up for a second. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, and hello, we got Introduction. We got Tristan Stock. Yeah, Tristan. From the Saurian moderation team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Although it still doesn't feel like I'm part of the mod team. I'm still doing the same exact stuff. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're more like acting like the people the mods are trying to keep in check. He, he's our babysitter, pretty much. I guess. Yes. I'm the babysitter that has all the scoops and the um, stuff I can't talk about. Yeah. You're evil so, uh, so basically, to sum that point up, is uh, if you're going to do a, uh, a technical diagram that's going to be presented to the general public and perhaps a museum or uh, or a book or a TV series. You should probably uh, stray away from getting too speculative. You should probably stay close to the animal's uh, close relatives. Uh, but if you're just doing your own independent paleo art, then, uh, then stuff like that is fine and you can go all out. And it, it won't have as bad of an implication. So, so I would say... Uh, uh, and but yeah. I, I would uh, say at that point that you also always should um, speak to your commissioner about how speculative he or she right. wants it to be. Because yes. sometimes uh, you can get surprised. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, our, um, RJ Palmer, who uh, also works on the Saurian team, recently did something for a, for a book where he had to do a tyrannosaur oh, and he wasn't allowed to give the tyrannosaur feathers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, which well, is unfortunate, if you ask. Well, I, which, I, which I is, which is also done it. What, what I think is the most uh, unfortunate thing about that is he produced this big art piece of a feathered tyrannosaur and that um, is current, that is still under embargo by the company, but he can't even show it to anybody because of that. The oh, man, that... So he, really he basically movie. had to take that T-Rex version that had the feathers and he can't show it to anybody unless the company uses it in a future book or if the company lets him go. So he couldn't have that picture for years and never be able to show it to anybody. That's um, unfortunate. Yeah, so he still has... Um, so the unfeathered version is in the book, but he still has a feathered version that the company still technically owns and he's not allowed to show it to anybody. Oh. Man, I'm like no. glad that I'm not studying art. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's design, not art. Mm -hmm. Ah, true, true, Bob. I mean, you you are more liberated in what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, it's it's always this discussion, art or design or yeah, it's it's an endless story. It's blurry. So better start. Better don't start there. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll be here all night. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, what else? Uh, maybe we are getting uh, a bit too uh, long, or I don't know. Yeah, we, we've been going for about two hours now. Yeah. I think we've covered a lot of interesting topics. Yeah, it's, it's time for the ending theme and the um, foreshadowing for the next episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> can't, for, can't foreshadow too be, much, we don't even know what we're doing. Yeah, we've got to make a cameo appearance of the main villain of the season. 
Yeah. I, I didn't really yeah, say the shit. The middle of episode two, where we have the first character death. Oh no. Oh no. Who may it be? Yeah. Oh no. Characterics, baby. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Oh, oh die again. But he will reincarnate. Maybe in it. Maybe may be in it. Introduce, uh, introduced as a new character. Who knows? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm already dead inside. All right, so uh, that'll be it for. That'll be it for Flotcast. We will uh, see you all whenever we do the next one. Or if. Or him. Hope I say something next time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and as always, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and uh, let's get right into the news. Go to audible.com forward slash uh, <laughs> paleo flux. Buy get all a free the audio book. <laughs> Tune in next time when I brush the barnacles. <laughs> Bye. Oh yeah, boy! How long is your boy? Why? Thank <laughs> you.